gonna lie, that V8 does sound very, very good. Yo, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Now, as you guys are reading the title of this video, you guys can tell that I copped a new whip. Honestly, I'm super excited. This is something that I've wanted for the past couple of months, um, but I do need to go ahead and address this right now. I know I'm gonna get some comments in the comment section of this video if I don't. No, I did not sell the FRS. The FRS is my baby. We have a lot of things to do to that car still. It's not even remotely done, but I did need to go ahead and pick up another daily or a daily because the car I used to daily to get around town if I need to do errands or if I did not want to drive the FRS, if it was wet outside, terrible outside, just nasty outside, that daily is no more. Now I went ahead and picked up a full bolt-on 2004 two-valve Mustang GT. Now you guys might be wondering why I didn't go ahead and pick up a 5.0. Why didn't not go ahead and pick up a newer Mustang? Now the reason being is because my first car, the first car that I've ever owned actually was a 2000 V6 Mustang. So I felt that it was a perfect time to kind of jump from the V6, you know, SN195 platform to the V8 SN195 platform instead of going ahead and getting a Coyote because honestly, I'm a Mustang person at heart. Now, I do love, you know, the four bangers. I do love the tuner uh, cars at like the FRS, you know, BRZ86, STI, WRX, all that stuff like that. Super obviously, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I went ahead and copped a Coyote 5.0, you probably would have seen nothing but 5.0 content on the channel and the FRS would have been on the back burner even though we've came so far. I mean, I would have I would have literally fell in love with that car quickly and I'm kind of the person that likes to finish things before I jump to the next project. So that's exactly why I went ahead and picked up a 2004 uh, two valve Mustang GT. Obviously, I'm gonna be doing you know, some things to this car. Um, am I gonna boost it? I mean, most likely because the parts in these cars are actually very, very cheap and affordable. Honestly, I priced everything out already. If I wanted to make like a 600 wheel horsepower setup on this car right now, it literally would cost me a third of how much the motor and the new turbo kit would be on the BRZ FRS 86. So honestly, am I gonna boost this car? Yes, but also if you guys are unaware, I am moving to Texas within the next couple of months, October. I literally do not have enough time to get all the parts together and you know install everything. So we're gonna ride this car out the way it is right now. It is full bolt-on. Yes, I'm gonna do some other modifications to the car in the time being up until I move. And then after that, after I get the FRS situated, you know, we can start messing with this V8 and you know throw some twins on it because honestly. It's a really, really sick car. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys exactly what it looks like right now. All right, here it is, fellas. This is the new daily, my 2004 two-valve Mustang GT. Um, this actually is a full bolt-on car already. It has quite a bit of things done to it. I will make a separate video going over everything that's done to the car so you guys have an idea of what we're working with right now. Um, usually I don't like to buy other people's projects, but to the fact that this is gonna be, you know, just a daily, and I'm not gonna be doing heavy modifications with it as of right now. And honestly, some of the things that are already done to this car, I'm actually gonna go ahead and actually swap out for my own personal favorite parts and also some better parts in my opinion because i'm honestly familiar with the mustang platform um i'm actually more familiar with the mustang platform over the brz platform believe it or not because remember my first car was a mustang so it's kind of like you know me being right back at home and that's kind of why i went ahead and picked up a two valve uh instead of getting a coyote because i kind of wanted you know to jump into the next iteration of you know the first car i've ever owned so there is some type of sentimental value with this car. Not a lot, but at the same time, I do have a reason for why I do everything on the channel. Now you guys can see uh, the front bumper, uh, it does need to get some love. Um, I've already kind of priced out everything that I need to do. I already have everything in my cart on American Bustle. So we're gonna go ahead and get a brand new front bumper, uh, paint it white. We're actually gonna get the refreshed version of this bumper so it looks a little bit better. We are going to get a new Mach 1 chin spoiler as well, as you guys can see here. Might as well go ahead and replace this because since we are getting a brand new bumper, um, we are going to be getting a new Mach 1 chin spoiler. 
But that's pretty much, you know, everything as far as the front that just needs to be restored. Obviously, there are some rock chips on the car. I don't really care about that because it is a daily. Um, I'm most likely going to be driving this car from Illinois to Texas. So rock chips aren't really going to be big of a deal. Are going to be that big of a deal. Excuse me. I'm not too sure I'm going to put on the new bump before I move or just say fuck it. Um, I don't know. I probably should wait, but I might just say fuck it and put it on before I move. Because I don't really like having my cars dirty like that, but... You know, it's a daily, whatever, as of right now. But as you guys can see here, the car is pretty damn clean. This car, uh, if you guys are wondering, it actually has 160,000 miles on the body, and it has 60K miles on the motor, and I believe it is the Romeo block. So, um, pretty decent. I want to get the 2004 because it has the, uh, the PI heads on the block so they flow a little bit better obviously it is a two valve so it's not going to be pushing out that much horsepower but honestly building the bottom end of this car is very very cheap a turbo kit for this car is very very cheap i can easily get this car to about 500 wheel with a couple you know modifications obviously the turbo built bottom end and um you know we could be going also if you guys can see here i'm gonna have to go ahead and swap out the headlights you have some condensation. Funny thing is, my um, my right turn signal doesn't even work, so I gotta get that fixed as well. But there's just like really, really minor, inexpensive fixes. Uh, obviously, knock on wood, knock on air. And that's all I'm gonna have to do. Um, at least just to get the car, you know, looking newish. You know what I'm saying? Um, it has the Mach 1 kind of grill delete, just the pony right here. I love that, but that's already done. That's the one less thing I have to complete. But yeah. We need to go ahead and wash the car again. It has some Rovos wheels. I'm not really familiar with these wheels. It has some uh, Federal 595 RSs. They got some 265 4018s in the back. I'm going to show you that actually. These tires actually are not that bad. They're no R888s. There's nothing that I'm used to, but I mean, they're not that bad. Obviously, I could blow, I, I, I've done already. I've blown these tires off in first gear. Um, <laughs> had a little bit of fun in the fronts. I believe these are two, these are 245, 4018s in the fronts. And the car is lowered on Roush suspension. So it is sitting a little bit lower. It's not bad. It's got some drilled and slaughter rotors in there. You guys haven't seen. So nice little brake upgrade. It's got a little damage right here. Not really damage, kind of paint's coming off right here. Honestly, ironically, I know exactly why the paint is came off right there. I'm honestly not even gonna fix that because uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, we're gonna put some drag radios on here and we're gonna smoke the fuck out these tires. So there's no reason to fix that. It's That's going to happen literally again as soon as I, you know, get around to messing with the power. Um, <laughs> I'm not even gonna fix that. Um, something else I'm gonna fix is this kind of fork brake light right here. I'm actually gonna swap that out to the Raxium fourth brake light. It has some condensation on it, just like the headlights. I'm also gonna go ahead and get some new Mustang, uh, kind of like the 3mm tape black one to black that out. And yeah, that's about it, man. Just need to get a good detail, a good wash. 5% window tint all the way around and it's gonna look nice that's kind of why I want to get a white Mustang I, bought, I like the white Mustangs and honestly I like white cars in general because I'm a pretty basic clean person when it comes to cars. I just like, to like my cars looking clean and I think you can match everything out white with black accents that's why I'm gonna get the smoke headlights again keep everything the same get that black uh, Mustang tape and do the fourth brake light. But other than that, the car is, it's in great condition. It drives fine. I think there might be a very, very slight exhaust leak because the exhaust system, I don't know how many miles are on it. I don't really care to ask because I'm gonna end up swapping that out eventually. Uh, but also it also has a black fuel door. Like it has a lot of nice accents, exactly what I would do. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the shorty antenna as well this is the 40th anniversary edition too so you know kind of a little up badge for the regular gt 
but I think it's pretty good. So like the only thing is the only thing I really need to do is just a new front bumper, new Roush uh, chin spoiler, do uh, headlights and just the fourth brake light the tape and you know it's pretty much you know looking nice i am thinking i'm not gonna lie i am thinking let me know if you guys think this is a good idea or not i am thinking about doing a cow hood i've always wanted to have a cow hood especially on this year's mustangs i think this year's mustangs look nice with the cow hood i don't want to put any cobra parts on this car because personally the cobra is my dream car um, so I don't want to put any Cobra parts in this car. That's just me. I don't mind anybody doing that to their car, but um, Just just for me personally, I'm not gonna put any Cobra parts on this car just because I Don't want to disrespect that car that that, that literally is my dream car. We're gonna have that on the channel uh, one day, so um, We're gonna wait to kind of spoil ourselves with that SVT uh, Badging so I'm not gonna put any Cobra parts in this car. So don't ask I'm gonna go over to the interior. It's not that bad. Um, it does have a very, very, very heavy clutch. This actually is a cable clutch. It's a 2004 uh, manual car, so the clutch is very, very heavy. I mean, it's kind of, it's growing on me. I like it, but I'm gonna have to get used to it, which is kind of why I'm not going ahead and adding power to this car yet, because you gotta get used to your car. You gotta learn how to drive it, and honestly. I don't really know how to drive this car that well. It's fun to drive, it drives nice, but I'm not gonna lie. Um, I stalled it a couple times because this clutch is very, very weird. Um, it does have a short throw shifter. This ball has got to get swapped out ASAP because it's like literally a metal ball and it gets hot. Like you're literally gonna burn your hand on this, but uh, you guys can see here, I don't know what short shifter it has, but it's like very, very short, it's very, very mechanical reverses like down to the right so it's like I don't know it's it's very weird it's very very weird um, but I like it I like it I'm not gonna lie as you can see here there's the, the interior nobody's ever sat in the back seats I don't think because then the back seats are literally meant passenger seat you know there's some slight rips but you know it's got 160k on this body 60k on the motor so I think it looks pretty nice. Obviously, the seat belt sag. Can't really have this happens on every car. It happened on my old Mustang, so it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood for you guys as well, so you guys can see exactly what we're working with inside the hood. All right, so here is the uh, under the hood of the car. Um, somebody's hauling. I do gotta go ahead and clean out this uh, engine bay. The engine bay is dirty. I don't know the last time this engine bay's been cleaned out, but I mean the car drives strong, so it is what it is. You guys can see here we got a BBK throttle body. We have a BBK cold air intake. I believe this is a 74 millimeter throttle body, if I'm not mistaken. Um, don't go too crazy, but it does have a BBK throttle body. Um, you guys can see down there, it does have, I don't know if you can see it, but it has BBK Shorty headers, which are going to be swapped out to some uh, Cooks long tube headers. As soon as I get around to messing with the exhaust and the, you know, everything to do with the car, I will be swapping that out to the Cooks long tube headers. Um, it does have a, I believe, a uh, BBK off-road x-pipe um, for the mid pipe section has an off-road x-pipe and then it has a magna flow magna pack exhaust so it's not that bad um, it does have the trick flow I'm sorry no it has the trick flow cold air intake not the BBK cold air intake it has a trick flow cold air intake I believe it does have trick flow heads as well on this car i think there is some slight motor work to this i believe it has trick flow heads uh i gotta look at the uh the sheet that the guy gave me but it's pretty decent it's a pretty decent bolt-on setup um obviously like i said we're gonna swap this out for the bbk oh not bbk we're gonna swap this out for the cooks long tube headers we're gonna swap this out for the cooks um off-road x-pipe or the off-road H-pipe. If I can find an off-road H-pipe, we're gonna go with that. But 
I mean, the EPA is cracking down, so you only can find catted X pipe. So worst case scenario, we'll just go with the, uh, the Cook's catted X pipe. And then for the exhaust, I actually kind of like the exhaust. It's actually not loud when you don't want it to be loud, but when you do get on it, it is pretty loud. Um, my friends told me that it, 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 you can hear the car like six cars up, so. Sounds good though. Cruising around, it sounds good. I will eventually do a POV video on the car, but I kind of want to show you guys exactly, you know, the new daily on the channel. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the car right now so you guys can hear what it sounds like. window a little bit because you can get locked out in these older cars. Ask me how I know. It has that nice kind of like rumble to it. Like a deep growl. That's what I like about these two valves. Personally I like the way the two valves look and I like the way the two valves sound. a little bit so you guys can see it. The Raxium uh, taillights. I think I forgot to mention that, but it does have Raxium taillights. They're, they're actually sequential as well, which is actually really nice. So it's kind of like an upgrade. It looks really nice. I'm really happy that I was able to get a white one because black, the white, uh, kind of the black offset, the white body of the car, it's gonna look real good. Rev this up real quick for you guys. I mean, it's. It, it, I mean, it's kind of loud. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of loud. Thing. I mean, it's, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe it does, maybe this car does a better job than I thought at sound deadening. I mean, maybe it, maybe it is loud. <laughs> maybe it is loud. Let me know what you guys think about the Mustang. Um, it does have a check engine light because it is fully catless. Um, it does, he does not have the tune on it, believe it or not. So I'm going to have to get the SCT4 tuner to tune the car as well as kind of tune it after I do go ahead and add some modifications to this. Now, I'm just gonna give you the rundown of the potential setup that this car could see. Um, somebody actually did offer me a good price to pick this up off. <laughs> I literally got the car and somebody did offer me a good price to pick this up. I got this car for literally a absolute steal and somebody offered me a good amount to kind of take this off my hands already. So uh, we'll see, we'll see, but the potential setup on this car uh, it's gonna be cooks long tube headers a cooks if i can do an off-road h pipe we'll do that but if not we'll do a catted x pipe uh i want to keep the the magna flow magna pack exhaust but i might go ahead and put on some boiler attacks or some boiler stingers i am going to do some stage three comp cams with this car and I am going to build the bottom end because it's very, very cheap to do on these. Like, it's honestly like incredibly cheap to build the bottom end. Just a basic bottom end setup. We'll go ahead and do that. And then I am probably going to throw an on three twin turbo kit on this car and um, try to push like 600 wheel and then have that be a 600 wheel street 
daily, which sounds weird, but I mean, when you do it properly, it can be done, especially with the boost control to turn it down when I don't want to hit it and then turn it right up when I want to hit it. So we'll see. But as of right now, um, this is not going to be really a race car. This is going to be just a daily cruiser, just cruise it around town, you know, run errands. I don't want to drive the uh, FRS. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of the basic setup. Why I decided to pick this car up. We'll get that bumper situated, the Mach 1 chin spoiler situated, the headlights, 5% tent, and we'll fix up kind of the rear end as far as just the uh, smoked fourth brake light Raxium, as well as the Mustang tape. So that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. I don't think I'm gonna change the wheels on, these car, on this car. I don't really care, it's gonna be a daily. We're gonna have a drag pack in the back most likely, especially if we uh, go ahead and do the twins. Probably actually do that, you know, around the time we do the cam, so. We're gonna see. I'm probably gonna keep this car at 93. I mean, there's really no reason to run E85. I don't think you really gain that much power running E85 on the two valve motor. So we're gonna keep this running 93 and just have, you know, a decent, a decently quick daily. So yeah, hope you guys did enjoy it. Um, said one to just jump from the V6 platform to the V8 platform and then um, either jumping from this platform to the coyote or the cobra depending on uh you know depending on what i'm feeling like that cobra looking nice though honestly i i could see it right now that cobra oof god damn that cobra would look nice hope you guys do enjoy it's been your boy Relev pov and um i'm gonna catch you guys in the next video deuces